Welcome to the Beginner's Course Remastered, Lesson 7, Level Adaptation. All right, this wouldn't be a true beginner's course without a history lesson in day trading. We will get to level adaptation in a few moments, but before we do that, let's look back into the past about how day trading kind of started and where its origins are, how it evolved, and some of this information that people tend to overlook. So back in the mid 80s, there was kind of a boom in day trading. Data was starting to be used, technical analysis was becoming more and more popular, and there was all these concepts that were starting to be developed on the charts. So one of the ones that we're going to talk about today is where a level gets rejected. Now, you have levels all over your chart. You mark the high points, the low points, points in between. There is a ton of different ways to mark levels, and there's a bunch of different appropriations as to when you use those levels. If a level gets marked on a certain candle, well, that has a time and a place, just like there may be 10 or 20 or even 30 other types of candles that you mark as data points, and they all have their time and place. Not important for today's lesson, but what is important is back in the 80s, there was kind of something that was happening. There was this evolution of the charts that was going on. We had levels being created, and interestingly enough, they would reject after they were touched for the first time. And this is where one of the most popular topics in day trading came from, which we call the first touch theory or whatever you want to call it. I don't think it has an official name, but the idea is that it touches a level one time and it has to test that level before it can actually break it. So these become important buying spots. A level is created on a chart. It goes up or down towards that level. It tests it. It's a good point for a trade contract to be open or a trade buy or sell, whichever one you like. And it would kind of have this moment where it would see if it can hold that level or not. This ended up evolving into different forms of kind of first touch rejection or an untested level or these different things that were happening on the chart. Now, if you actually go and look at charts from the 80s, you can see all these rules being created in day trading. You can see where a level from 1985 may get touched or tested out in 2006 or 2007. And these rules had been being created for a long period of time in day trading. And they started founding other rules in day trading. So another popular one was after this was developed in the mid 80s, you started to see something that would get tested two times or three times or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. So then came all these other different rule sets. You had the one touch rule, which is the first test or the untested level touch. You had the one three rule, which then came after, which was all tests once. And then a the second time, if it holds again, the third time, it's probably going to break down. And that eventually evolved into the 135 rule, which was five tests and the 1357. And it just kind of got out of hand with all these different things that didn't really make sense and really wasn't what is happening on the charts actually at all. It was kind of this muddling of information that continuously piled up and piled up and piled up. And it kind of confused the marketplace. So throughout the history of day trading, you see all these concepts that were introduced, but not all of them actually work. Now, the reason why we're talking about this is because we want to understand how to adapt our levels. Now, these are what I call data points on the charts. When you have a data point, it communicates something very specific. So in order to properly understand where we can adapt our levels in the future, we must come to terms with a concept of data points on our charts. Data points are areas that we find interesting buy or sell opportunities. And then once they're tested, we need to adapt our expectations or once an event happens in the markets that may affect our original data point, we need to kind of constantly adapt and stay ahead of the ball game. If we were to simply mark a level there and leave it for the rest of time, well, this wouldn't make very much sense because those data points and the information they relay, they change over time. I think the key piece of information about that history lesson is there has been a ton of different knowledge in day trading come out from the mid 1980s to current. And a lot of that information is just wrong. It's concepts that have been trying to be developed and things that people try to make sense of, but it doesn't really work. Kind of the same take I have on indicators, the same take I have on volume and momentum. These things that don't really communicate anything of meaningful value, they're kind of clung onto because people don't really understand the deeper data points of what's going on. Rather, what we have is data points that communicate very exact moments and charts and those data points adapt in a constant varying way. So try to block out 99% of the stuff you hear on the markets because all of this information that we've created over the course of the past 40 years, well, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but it's simply most of it doesn't work. So this is great because now you can kind of clean your mind out of all that stuff that you may be hanging on to if you're somebody who has been day trading for a lifetime. 
or if you're a brand new beginner or someone who's just getting into the career, now you can kind of go with this thing with a clean approach and a logical approach that makes sense. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about level adaptation now, and we're going to start to talk about how we can adapt our levels to kind of open our minds to the different possibilities of what can actually happen on charts. So we're going to jump right into an example on our charts about how some of these moments actually have happened over the course of the history of day trading. In day trading, we have again had these points and let's take a look at some charts here. So we're going to kind of mark some interesting areas here. And this is a gold chart and this is back in the 1980s. You can see your timestamps at the bottom of the screen. So we're simply just going to start marking some of these points. We can mark this one. We can mark this one here. Oops, this one right here. Some of these low points in the charts and we can start to talk about where and how they make sense and just kind of walk through them with adaptation and expectations. So this is kind of that first touch rule that we were just talking about. So it tested it here for the first time and it's going to reject. If you were to simply to move to a higher time frame, you can see that it has that same first touch and reject rule. And then it does it a second time and a third time. And then this is where the one, three, five rule kind of took birth, right? You had, oh, well, the first touch had happened. It means it must go for a second touch and a third touch. So these concepts had been created over the course of time. And as you evolve through time, it touches once, twice, three times, four times. We call this five times. Maybe it was justified as a sixth and a seventh time where it broke out. So then over the evolution of time, fast forward 20 years from 85 to 2005, the creation of another concept that didn't really work or didn't really make sense was created. It was the 1357 rule all of a sudden. What was first the 135 rule? Uh, or sorry, the one, two, three rule turned into the one, three, five rule. And before that, it was the one, two rule. And then the same thing on the bottom here, you had the first touch right here, and it touched it once to test it down here on your charts. And we can look at this one too. It tests it here for the first time and breaks down and holds it. And there you go. The creation of the first touch rule applies where you have a stock that made sense to buy it on the first touch and it would bounce off its target. Hence giving you the founding pieces of day trading back in the eighties the first touch rule where it was created, and then the procreation after that of different types of material in the marketplace. Now here you can see it here again, if you mark the bottom of a candle, it goes and it hits it for the first time and rejects and then confirming the one, three or one, two, three rule breaks down, creates a new move down here, right? The level gets adapted back in the eighties, right? You adapt your level. So that's, where we're going to take a pause for a second here. Before we go into more of these kind of examples on our charts, we are going to talk about how we adapted this level. We had this moment on the chart here where this broke its level. At that point, we simply want to take this level off our chart. We don't want to use this level in the future and we don't want to keep it here on our chart. Instead, what we want to do is we want to adapt it to kind of the next expected moment here or possibly here, right? So if you were in this moment, you could see that in the future, one of these two will get tested. And indeed, it was the one that we were supposed to adapt it to. It was the actual low of the move. Hence, giving you a move from the early 2000s that was first created back in 1985 all the way to 2015, where it tests it for the first time and moves up and off of it. A time old theory that has been here since the mid 80s and kind of one of the first evolving points as to where levels started to get adapted. And you have to move and adjust your expectations with your day trading charts as they evolve. You have moments that happen and simply put, after those moments happen for the first time, they move on and you are now into a new part of your day trading move. There's a new data point that's created off of that. So if you go back here and look, take your level right here, right? You break this level down. It then creates a new data point that communicates new data for the future. The one thing you don't want to do is kind of keep all your levels on the chart like this and just have them there forever. This doesn't really make sense for a beginner trader, uh, nor does it for any trader. There is a time and place when you might want to leave a level on a chart, but this definitely isn't it. And we will get into that way in the future in a few courses after this one. So there you have it. A bit of a history lesson followed through with an example on the way levels are created and level adaptation. Now, I think it's really important to, again, stop this for a second time and talk about level adaptation. The key piece of level adaptation and one of the things that we did in our example from our chart. So first and foremost, level adaptation will come as the third step. The first step is removing old levels off of our chart because they're no longer useful. When a level gets hit and tested, you've either taken that trade or you haven't taken that trade. Either way, whichever you've done, you should move on and look for the next level. So this is the first key piece of level adaptation. 
you need to move on and just kind of accept the fact that you were either in the trade or you weren't in the trade. You marked it. You missed it. Either way, it's happened. The move is over. The data point is done. It's created a new data point for the future. That's it. Second part of that is removing those old levels off of your charts actually reduces the pollution that you have on your trading charts. So when you reduce the pollution on your charts, and what I mean by reducing the pollution is just kind of all of these levels that are on your screen. If you have 30 and 40 levels going through your screen, it's simply too much. You should just be focusing on the moments that can happen next. You shouldn't be focused on 30 and 40 different possible scenarios. Rather, you should just try to do your best to adapt your levels to kind of these moments where you think it can touch and mark those as your next points and keep the screen real estate or the screen pollution, I like to call it, keep that to a minimum so your mind can stay clear and clean and you can make better decisions. You're not going to be confused by 20 levels that are on your chart from the past that no longer make sense. The key to this is to understand and start practicing level adaptation, which is the third part to level adaptation. When a level gets hit, it creates a data point. So now that they've gotten hit in the first time, you have to move that level and adapt your expectations, hence the key term of level adaptation. Let's adapt our levels to the next data point that can be hit. Let's go higher on our charts and move that target that we have, that level of resistance or support higher or lower if it's support. And let's adapt our levels and take all of these things off the chart. So we've kind of done a one, two, three approach where we have taken off the old levels that aren't really used anymore. We have removed everything from our charts except the following moment to come. So kind of this idea of the next moment as a second step and the third step as adapting those levels to the next data point that can be reached. A very simple one, two, three approach. Keep your charts clean and move your levels when they're touched. A very simple way to do it. So this has been a great lesson today. Not only was I able to school you and give you a history lesson on day trading, I was able to kind of help you clear your mind with some of these concepts that have been developed over time and a lot of the stuff that's in the market that really just doesn't make sense and is used while people lose money in the market. So it's a really good cleansing of bad information out of your mind and a really good expectation moving forward to see where you should actually mark these levels and how to adapt them and how to keep your charts clean so you can simply make correct, good decisions and have nice, clean, healthy charts that allow you to be constantly profitable. In the next lesson of the Beginner's Course Remastered, it is going to be a live trade. Now, this is the final lesson where we're going to tie everything together and it's going to be in a very exciting way. I'll see you there on the final lesson.